Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm going to just uh, do what I typically do at this time, which is to give an overview of the format of tonight's meeting. Um, we are being recorded live. Uh, this is a meeting that will be broadcast on YouTube with uh, closed captioning made available after. Um, there are resources on our website for how you can participate in one of these virtual or remote meetings. Um, there are three ways that the public can participate when public comments are solicited or uh, the applicants can participate when their commentary is solicited. And those are to either use the raise your hand button um, on your screen as a webinar participant. Uh, and then our moderators will see that your hand is raised and we can invite you to uh, make comments that way. Uh, there is also a method of doing that same thing if you're calling in rather than using the Zoom link on a computer. Uh, you would just dial star nine and that would appear as a raised hand and we'll invite you to speak uh, just with you on the phone. Um, and then there is also the chat function where you can ask questions of our uh, commission, our planning commission using the chat window at the bottom of the screen. And if you do that, I would just ask that you clarify um, when you're asked to speak if, uh, it, or that when we verify your comments that are in the chat window, if those are intended to be um, public comments for the record or uh, simple clarification questions for our moderator. Uh, tonight's meeting is, there, there's an agenda on our Planning Commission Agendas and Minutes webpage. There have been uh, links made viewable on the Van Buren Township homepage, uh, links to both submittals from the applicants who are on tonight's agenda, as well as a uh, link directly to the agenda. There's also information online about how to participate in this meeting. Um, tonight's agenda will include a review of minutes and other standard uh, preliminary items, including roll call. Um, there will also be one public hearing item which is for the mobile gas station and drive-through redevelopment proposed at 11250 Haggerty Road. Um, there will also be an old business item, which is an item for which there was a public hearing opened and closed on January 8th of this year uh, that is called the Hampton Manor, excuse me, Hampton Manor uh, Senior Housing Project. Uh, that is an old business item. Uh, it involves a site plan review and a, a uh, special land use consideration. Uh, then we will go into new business and the first new business item will be reflective of the public hearing, which is the mobile gas station site. Uh, the planning commission is only considering the special land use request at this time and not the site plan request. Um, and I will speak a little bit more on that at, at the time that that item is brought up. And then uh, finally, there will be a temporary land use request for uh, what's called Waters Kitchen, which is a uh, food trailer proposed at 10010 Belleville Road. Um, so with no further ado, I will just say that I and other, uh, the moderator here tonight will help to navigate the chat and the, the conversation during the meeting, but otherwise the planning commission is free to, uh, proceed with their typical meeting format and speak as they would normally speak. So, um, with no further ado, I will bring that over to our chair, Carol Thompson. Thank you, Director Powers. Good evening. Welcome to Charter Township of Van Buren Planning Commission meeting. This is Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. And we'll start with the roll call, please. Ms. Harmon. Nadina Abtonson. Here. Sherry Budd. Brian Kelly. Here. Donald Boynton. Here. Jeff Jar. Here. Joan Franzoy. Here. Carol Thompson. Here, thank you. We have an agenda presented. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Commissioner Boynton, support? Support. Commissioner Kelly. Um, I believe, Director Powers, we have one uh, small change on the agenda um, under old business item number one. Is that correct? That's right. If you'd like, I can explain. That'd be great. The header on that agenda item is listed as public hearing and it should be listed as special land use. There are two different old business items for the Hampton Manor project. The first of which is described as the special land use request uh, in which we'll go over the special land use standards and the potential recommendations to the board of trustees for the special land use. And then there's the other request which is for preliminary site plan. Uh, just in making the header, um, 
uh, that might have been from the previous agenda. There's the copy error that just said that that was the public hearing. Of course, the public hearing for that item uh, was done in January. So this, there is no public hearing for that item tonight. That should be, the, the phrase public hearing should be replaced with special land use. Great, thanks. So we accept the amendment to the motion. Uh, Mr. Boynton? Yep. And Mr. Kelly? Yes. Great, thanks. All right, motion to approve the agenda as changed. Please, uh, we'll do a roll call vote, please. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Harry Budd? Donald Boynton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joe Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. We also have tonight minutes from the meeting of July 8th of 2020. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Mr. Boynton, support. Support. Mr. Franzoy. Any changes or correction to the minutes? We'll have a roll call vote to approve the July 8th minutes, please. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Ashenson? Yes. Sherry Budd? Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you very much. We'll move right into the business part of our meeting. First on tonight's agenda is a public hearing for the mobile gas station redevelopment and drive through It is a request by NC Designers on behalf of the owner, Real Estate LLC of Belleville Oil Company, Inc. for a special land use permit to demolish buildings on an existing gasoline station and to construct a new convenience store with retail and food service, including a drive through lane and one drive through window, gasoline pumps and related site improvements. The approximately 1.06 acre site is zoned C1 General Business District. It is located at 11250 Haggerty Road. The tax parcel number is 8305199-0003-002, and it is the northwest corner of the intersection of the I-94 North Service Drive and Haggerty Road. We'll start with a motion to open the public hearing, please. So moved. Mr. Boynton, support. Or Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Okay. And <laughs> we'll uh, have a quick roll call vote to approve the motion to open the public hearing. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Don Poynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. Carrie Budd? Carol Thompson? Yes. So then the public hearing is now open and we would welcome comments on this agenda item. If you would like to speak to this agenda item, if you can indicate if you're one of the methods to the moderator, we'd be happy to hear your comments. We'd ask you to keep your comments specific to this agenda item. There'll be a chance to speak on other items later on in the meeting. So anyone here to speak on this agenda item? I'm not seeing any virtual hands raised at this time. Okay, I will ask if anyone, um, any of the commissioners have any questions or comments at this time? Hearing none, check back to see if anyone in the audience. One final call for public comment on this public hearing. Okay, hearing none, could I have a motion to close the public hearing please? So moved. Support. Support. Commissioner Atchison. And a quick roll call vote to close the public hearing, please. Jeff Char? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Dina Atchison? Yes. Harry Budd? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. So that takes us to the old business part of our agenda. The first item, item one, is Hampton Manor, a special land use request 
the proposed senior housing facility. The applicant, Van Buren Investors Land Holding LLC, is requesting special land use approval for the construction of a proposed senior housing facility called Hampton Manor with assisted living and memory care units. The property is located on the south side of Tyler Road between Morton Taylor and Hegarty Road and is zoned C local business district. The parcel is 7.11 acres in size and includes six tax parcel IDs. We'll first have a presentation from the applicant and then we'll hear from township staff and our consultant. Thank you, Chair, and um, though we are going to the applicant, I'll just say that uh, we will uh, moderate this a little bit. So at this time, uh, Bill Thompson, representing the Hampton Manor Project Group, will uh, be speaking, and I believe he'll be able to use the screen um, to show his, his broad overview of uh, the project and some changes to the project, and then staff, uh, including Myself briefly, but more extensively, Vidya Krishnan, our principal planner and our township engineer will discuss the project over the course of two segments. And the first will be the special land use review. Um, and that will involve primarily our principal planner. And then we'll go into the preliminary site plan, which will involve uh, also the township engineer. So at this time I see um, Mr. Thompson with his hand raised and I'm going to allow him to speak and um, Mr. Thompson, you are muted. Let's make sure you're unmuted. Am I unmuted now? Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, my name is Bill Thompson from Laner Associates uh, representing Hampton Manor this evening. Uh, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. I think you're gonna be able to see it. Is it visible? Not yet. Um, Not yet. You're, you're clicking the share screen at the bottom. Mr. Thompson, you need to have the PowerPoint open on your desktop or whichever device you're on this meeting for, it's, and it's then you have to hit share screen. Okay, there's a the PowerPoint. Okay, and then when you click share screen, you'll select a window uh, there might be different options for what you're going to share. You're going to want to make sure you click the, the window for the PowerPoint. There we go. There it is. I knew this would work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hampton Manor is proposing a uh, senior living facility at the southwest corner of Tyler Road and Morton Taylor Road. Um, and there's a site plan. Um, it's got, there's, it's got an access on, uh, on Tyler Road, an exit, uh, access on Morton Taylor Road. There's a detention basin in the back. Uh, if looking at the plan, you can see that there's a square building with a center corridor. And on the left-hand side, you see the memory care unit, memory care wing. This is a landscape rendition or a rendition by the landscape architect uh, showing the proposed plantings, the uh, driveways showing the buildings themselves and the pond um, and how it interacts with the adjacent properties. This is a floor plan for the building itself. Actually, the right-hand side is to the north. Uh, the, the top part of the drawing, which is a memory care ring, wing, is actually facing Morton Taylor Road. Uh, you'll see in the inside, there's uh, a connecting corridor uh, left and right and up and down. Uh, that contains uh, dining room areas, uh, recreation areas, and there are four uh, courts that are separated by the, uh, two, cor the two, cor two corridors. Uh, and they have various different amenities in those courts. Uh, this is a uh, landscape. This is the uh, architect's rendition of what the building will look like. 
This is an existing building that was completed last year in Shelby Township. Uh, you see, this is a style they use. Um, they have uh, stone uh, siding, lots of dormers. This is the same type of facility in Bay City. They have several of these in the area. Um, I think Shahid will be able to tell you which the closest ones to this site. This is a dining area. Uh, that's basically that center corridor right in this area right here. Uh, the dining area services all this all the members of the, all the residents in this facility. Uh, they can also have the option of eating in their rooms. The smaller rooms in that area, in that uh, central cross-sectional area, I conclude there's a, there's a, uh, there's a spa, uh, there's a small theater, there's a beauty salon. And then this is a picture of one of the uh, uh, pudding greens they have and that's like one of the things that'll be in the four corners of the uh, courts, like one of these courts. This is the typical setup of a room. Oh, go back to that one. Uh, the, the living area, they all, they all have door walls set to the outside along with the door to the central corridor. This is a small kitchen area that is in each unit. There's closet space, and uh, there's a, also bathrooms in each unit. This is pretty much the resting facility, the bedroom area. This office is, this is foreshortened for some reason or other. That bed is not two foot wide. <laughs> and this is typical of the bathrooms. And again, the one on the right, that's foreshortened because that sink is not more than, is certainly more than eight inches deep. Um, we gathered a lot of information from the first meeting. Uh, we responded to the comments that those were written and you have those. We also uh, incorporated some of the changes into our site plan and that's outlined in the letter. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to discuss them with you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I think we'll go directly to the staff and consultants and the letters and then see if there are questions or comments once we have all the materials presented. Thank you. Um, if I can jump in at that point. Um, sure, it's all yours, Director Powers. Thank you. So um, my role here will be just to give a broad overview of the process and um, the details of the plan I think are laid out um, in the presentation that Mr. Thompson just provided. Um, I will also say that uh, staff will, will uh, go over our comments and then we list that there's room for a planning commission discussion, of course, um, within the, the discussion for the special land use item or the site plan item, uh, you of course can entertain comments at your discretion. This is not a public hearing, but I think it's typical that you would uh, look to see if anybody's here with interest in this request and you can solicit comments. Um, but again, this is a, a two-part review. Uh, the first is a special land use consideration. Senior housing is a special land use in the C local business zoning district and a variety of other zoning districts throughout the township. Uh, this was based on the senior housing ordinance that was passed by, uh, recommended by the planning commission after uh, a lot of work and then approved by the township board in 2019. So uh, seeing the need for senior housing in the community, uh, varying types of senior housing, including more independent as well as more dependent um, or assisted living style units as you see in the proposal tonight. Um, they, these senior housing facilities are permitted as special land uses in their zoning, their respective zoning districts. Now, when, when we have a special land use consideration, um, that means that there are certain criteria that, that give the Planning Commission discretion to look closely at certain aspects of the proposal. Um, it is not a use necessarily that uh, falls under the, the typical terminology of what that zoning district may otherwise cover. So the special land use 
is a way to ensure that, that uh, this uh, unique land use fits well with its surroundings within the context of the zoning district that it lies in. So our uh, principal planner will go over the criteria that we use to evaluate the special land use request. And that's the first part of the request. The second part will be the more detailed site plan review, preliminary site plan review. Um, as Mr. Thompson said, there were some changes following the January 8th public hearing. Um, notably, there was a, a period that was affected by, of course, the uh, public health crisis. So uh, planning commission activities were uh, stalled for a while uh, because of that. But additionally, um, this project had undergone some changes um, and, and more clarifications than, than major changes. But uh, just to provide clarity and detail and uh, illustration to their project plans, there were responses to the public hearing comments from January 8th that are provided in your packet, uh, a traffic impact study uh, from February 14th that is included in the link uh, that was made public, and new plan submittals, as well as new review comments from staff. So over the course of the resubmittal of plans, there were adjustments made and, and staff had made some comments on those adjustments. Um, and I think at this point, I won't say anything else because I'd like to give us a chance to get into the special land use aspect of this request. Um, and with that, I will turn this over to Vidya Krishnan to discuss the special land use request. Thank you, Director Power. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the review letter from McKenna is dated March 24th. As Director Power said, we did have an opportunity to review the revised plan submitted by the applicant after the public hearing held on January. However, due to the current pandemic, a lot of projects got put on hold. So at this time, the changes to the actual plan itself since our review letters are not significant enough to warrant a full new review. Having said that, I will summarize the special land use comments for this project. Uh, the applicant Van Buren Investors Land Holding LLC is proposing to construct a senior housing development the proposed building will comprise of 56 assisted living units and 24 memory care units. It is located at the southeast corner of Tyler and Morton Taylor roads on a site with a total area of 7.11 acres. As previously mentioned, the applicant did appear before the planning commission for a public hearing on January 8th and received numerous questions and concerns from the public. The applicant was subsequently provided with an itemized list of at least 30 comments that they had to address or provide answers to. And the applicant has provided the responses to all the questions that were asked in a letter dated February 5th. And they also made appropriate revisions to the site plan based on the feedback that was received at the public hearing. Now, whenever a project is reviewed for special land use, there are general criteria that are applicable to all special land use, then criteria specific for the use involved. I will go over the general criteria for special land uses first. The first criteria will promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner. And the need for senior housing in Van Buren Township has been discussed at several planning commission and board meetings. This has been going on for a long time in response to which the planning commission and the board of trustees worked on and adopted an amendment allowing for senior housing of various types. The subject site is located at a major street corner, which provides access. And this particular site, the township has had some issues with regard to code enforcement. The proposed use actually cleans up the existing site and provides for some improvements to it, which will actually improve the drainage and other issues that the site is currently facing. The proposed use will promote the land of, promote the use of the land in a socially and economically desirable manner by cleaning up of the entire site and providing a much needed housing type within the township. Now, the second is, is it necessary for public convenience at this location? Now, the site is zoned C local commercial and it abuts streets on two sides, but generally single family residential use on all sides. When compared to other uses, the proposed use is a low intensity residential use and a reasonable use for the site, considering the uses that could be allowable in a C district parcel, several of which are very high intensity. The frontage onto two major thoroughfares makes it convenient for access. And the applicant did clarify after concerns at the last public meeting that the proposed facility is not a group home similar to some in the vicinity. 
group homes are regulated only by the state of Michigan and the local municipality has got no control over them. This, however, is a senior housing. So the township does have enforcement authority on the property itself, unlike some of the other uh, group homes that are located further down on Tyler Road, as was brought to the township's attention during the public meeting. Third criteria is, is compatible with adjacent uses of land. Although the proposed senior housing development is adjacent to single family residential units, the area along Tyler uh, Road between Belleville and Haggerty has got numerous subdivisions and planned residential developments, uh, some of which have not had their commercial portion constructed, but it has gotten approval for such uses. And the proposed senior housing development is consistent with this land use development pattern along that corridor. The next criteria is so located and proposed to be operated in a manner that public health, safety, and welfare will be protected. The proposed development, we will go over the details in our site plan review at a later time during this meeting. It is designed to conform to all of the requirements of the senior housing ordinance that was adopted. In response to the traffic concerns raised at the public hearing, the applicant did submit a detailed traffic study conducted by traffic engineering consultants dated February the 14th of this year. The study provides a detailed analysis of the turn movements, the timing, and the crash information for the abutting Tyler Road, Morton Taylor intersection. Based on the findings of that study, the intersections function at an LOS. It's an acronym for level of service. Level of service typically ranges from A through F, with A being the best functioning intersection and F being a fail. Uh, intersection functioning up to C is considered to be perfectly acceptable. Based on the traffic study findings, it said that the intersection functions at an LOS of A, which is the best you can have for most part, with B and C levels for some times and some turn movements since it's a four-way stop sign, which is considered acceptable. For the study finding, no improvements to the intersection are warranted at this time. Also, this intersection is under Wayne County jurisdiction, and based on the study data, the county is not likely to authorize or signalize the intersection at this time, because that was one of the questions raised at the public hearing, if a light can be added at this signal. A traffic study done by the applicant does not show the need for it. Even if Wayne County were to go ahead in response to the township's request and do a study, based on the data that we see, the hard numbers, um, the county is not likely to authorize adding of a signal at this intersection at this time. Next criteria is can be adequately served by public services and facilities in the area. We believe, yes, the proposed facility can be uh, served without diminishing or overtly affecting the public services and facility to existing land users in the area. They are working with the township engineer to meet all of the requirements. The proposed senior housing facility is not anticipated to cause injury to any other property in the neighborhood. With regard to natural environment and conservation of natural resources and energy, the site has significant tree cover of which 38 trees are proposed for preservation and 207 trees are to be removed. And these trees are located within areas of dry bay or the actual building footprint itself. The applicant will be providing replacement for every single regulated tree that is to be removed on the site. And this tree replacement will be over and above what is required for the basic site landscaping, which means replacement trees will be added to Greenbelt landscaping along both property frontages, along the property lines to the east and south, interior parking lot landscaping. So the number of trees that are going to go back on the site will far exceed the number of trees that are being taken out at this time. Is within the provisions of users requiring special approval, we believe the senior housing facility does meet the standard and it is in harmony with the purpose and conforms to the applicable, applicable regulations for the local business district. The last general special land use criteria is that the senior housing facility is related to the valid exercise of the township's police power and purposes which are affected by the proposed use or activity. In addition to these general standards, there are specific criteria in the ordinance that was adopted by the township for senior housing. I shall go over those in brief. There is a minimum square footage area required for independent living units, dependent living units, and the standard has been met. The amount of square footage that is being required is being complied with. 
The required minimum usable floor area for assisted living units must comply with state of Michigan licensing requirements. The applicant has provided information showing they do meet the state of Michigan standards. They have built several of these as Mr. Thompson presented. So they, they are very familiar with what the state regulations are and they have designed it to comply. The proposed site must have at least one property line abutting a existing or planned major thoroughfare with a right of way width of 120 feet or more as described in Wayne County's master thoroughfare plan and ingress and egress must be of this. The standard has been met. Tyler and Morton Taylor roads are both designed as major thoroughfares with 120 foot right of way designated. The maximum building height in the senior housing development cannot exceed 40 feet. The applicant's proposed building has a height as measured under the zoning ordinance of 17 feet. The minimum setbacks for senior housing are 50 feet from each of the property lines. The proposed facility does comply. The ordinance has specific standards of how much uh, open space needs to be maintained in addition and exclusive to public roads right of way Interior courtyards can be counted towards it if they are developed as an amenity. And as the applicant had presented, they are more than exceed what the ordinance requires through the use of their four interior courtyards, which will provide a safe place for some of their residents, including those who are on memory care and cannot really be let out of the building safely. The senior housing buildings must have a residential architectural image. That was an important component discussed by the planning commission, because some of these were anticipated to about single family development. The planning commission wanted to make sure that these buildings do conform to the residential scale. And uh, I'll go over the details of the architecture in my site plan review letter, but the applicant's architecture is perfectly in keeping with the materials that we require for such developments. The accessory uses um, should be limited only to the senior housing. At this time, this development does not propose any accessory use for non-residents. It's only for the, for the residents who will be living in the facility. The senior housing development does comply with the parking requirement for the ordinance. It does comply with the landscaping and screening standards that are set forth. And finally, the sign that is proposed for the development is also in compliance with the ordinance standards. The applicant has worked constantly with the township to address the concerns that were raised. In fact, subsequent to the public hearing that was held in January, they reached out to the township to make sure they got every single comment that was raised at the meeting and they could provide an answer for those to assure the homeowners and the residents in the neighborhood that their concerns would be taken seriously and addressed on this revised site plan. Based on our review of the proposal at this time, we would recommend that the Planning Commission recommend to the Township Board of Trustees approval of a special land use for the proposed senior housing development to be located on this parcel, subject to three conditions, approval of the utility plan and stormwater detention plan by the township engineer and Wayne County, that all conditions of preliminary site plan approval are met, and finally, that they come back before this body for final site plan approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have with regard to the special land use requirements. Thank you, Ms. Christman. We'll see other questions or comments from the commission for staff or for the applicant on the special land use. Anyone? Do we have any questions from the audience on special land use or comments? I do see a hand raised from a uh, Rick Williams. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, yeah. Mr. Williams. Okay, great. Uh, I don't know if this is time to cheap uh, bark in on this or not, but uh, uh, does the drainage uh, from from the uh, uh, building is that going to drain eventually into McClary Drain? We're actually not dealing okay. with, uh, hold on, we're not dealing with the, um, the site plan review until the next agenda item where okay. our engineer would weigh, on, weigh in on. So uh, can you stay with us through the next yep, agenda sure, item? Yep, sure, sure can, sorry about that. 
No, it's fine. It's fine. It sometimes gets confusing when we have different parts of one application. But right now we're just looking at the special land use. Next comes up site plan and engineering. So hang with us and uh, be sure and let us know if you have other questions. Will Thanks. do. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Commissioners, are you ready to take action? This would be a recommendation to Township Board. Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. I move that we present to the board for approval, special land use approval for the construction of a proposed senior housing facility called Hampton Manor with assisted living and memory care units. Um, property located on the south side of Tyler Road between Morton, Taylor, and Haggerty Road, um, Zone C District, um, parcel is 7.11 acres in size, include uh, and the size of the parcel. Um, pursuant to letter from McKenna of uh, March 24th, 2020, um, the recommendations therein and That is it. No, no, I'm sorry. Also, the uh, letter from uh, staff, uh, July 16th, 2020. Great, thanks. We have a motion. Is there support? Support. Support. Support, Commissioner Atkinson. Thank you. And we'll have a roll call vote, please. Jerry Budd. Yes. Medina Atchison? Yes. <clears throat> Brian Kelly? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. Thank you. And uh, thanks to McKenna Associates for a good review and to the applicant for the overview. And this recommendation for special land use will now go to an upcoming agenda for the Township Board for their determination. Um, I'd like to move now right into item two under old business, which is a continuation of the Hampton Manor, Manor Senior Housing discussion, this time to talk about preliminary site plan approval. Um, they are requesting preliminary site plan approval, the applicant, Van Buren Investors Land Holdings LLC, construct senior housing facility called Hampton Manor with assisted living and memory care units has already determined this is the property located on the south side of the road between Morton Taylor and Haggard. It is the C local business district and it is 7.11 acres in size and includes six tax parcel IDs. So I will ask if the applicant has anything else to add at this point and then we will hear letters of recommendation and review from McKinnon Associates and Fishback. So Mr. Thompson or anyone else with the applicant, any comments? Am I still alive? Ah, I see I lit up. Yes, uh, <laughs> with us. Yes. I'd, be, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I think there's nothing to add from our previous submittal. Uh, I do have two other people here from Hampton Manor that might be uh, needed to answer specific questions, uh, but we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Great, thank you so much. Let's listen to the reviews then. We'll start with you, Ms. Christian, and then Associates. I apologize, I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, I'll go over the site plan details. The basic fundamentals of the project have already been summarized. It is a special land use in the C district with a total of um, 56 assisted living units and 24 memory care units. With regard to dimensional requirements, the proposed building does comply with all of the required setbacks for the district and for senior housing development specifically. The maximum permitted building height is 40 feet and for the elevation proposed building height is 17 feet. One of the issues we previously ran into was a limitation on the maximum single building size in the C district. Although not related, although it affected this project, it was a limitation in the ordinance that was previously overlooked when the entire zoning ordinance was overhauled and when the senior housing amendment was adopted. 
as a result of which township staff worked and bought before the planning commission this past month an amendment to the C district regulations to ensure that the building size limitation still remains, but is limited to commercial uses only because commercial uses tend to generate a lot more traffic. That ordinance amendment was done and adopted by the Township Board of Trustees to be published and become effective on July 30th, which is next week. Um, the ordinance amendment was adopted after the Planning Commission reviewed data and made a determination on why residential uses in the C district, such as the senior housing, which was not anticipated at the time the district's original regulations were written, why it's important to make that distinction. So at this time, that issue has been addressed as soon as the ordinance goes into effect. With regard to access and circulation, the plan proposes two curb cuts, one each onto Tyler and Modern Taylor roads. The access drives are about midway along their site's frontage, 30 feet wide, one lane in and one lane out. It's proposed to be striped that way. The circulation pattern is two way to the west, north and east of the building. And on the south side of the building, it's one way. Originally, the applicant had planned to probably not have a circulation on that side. However, fire department does require to have full circulation around the building for safety reasons, which is why the applicant designed to have at least one way circulation on the south side. The plan is not proposing any cross access and we don't recommend any either because all of the abutting properties are single family residential. With regard to sidewalks, new five foot wide concrete sidewalks will be installed along the frontage of both streets on the site. And there is also a crosswalk connection from the public sidewalk onto the interior sidewalk that goes around the perimeter of the building itself. As I previously mentioned, subsequent to the public hearing, a traffic study was done and the data summarized by the traffic engineers indicates that at this time, no improvements are required for the intersection. Maybe someday Wayne County might do another review depending upon further developments that take place further east on Tyler or further west on Tyler, closer to Belleville Road and then make a determination. But at this time, a light or any signalization at that intersection is not warranted. For parking and loading, all of the, the number of parking spaces required is one space for every four residents, one for each employee in the largest shift. With 84 anticipated residents and 15 employees, 36 parking spaces are required. The applicant is proposing 50 parking spaces just to cover any additional need for parking. And the parking is spread out on three sides of the building so that it doesn't create a clustered parking lot appearance. All of the spaces meet the dimensional requirements of the ordinance and are double striped. One loading space is also shown on the east side of the building. Uh, the applicant does not anticipate the need for such a big loading space. However, it's an ordinance requirement. So they have shown the space that if any loading unloading takes place, it will be done in that area and the vehicle will leave. They do not expect regular truck traffic, it's only deliveries of food and any essentials that need to come in. Landscaping and screening. This was an item which we emphasized from the very beginning to the applicant as being of critical importance to the project. Um, the ordinance requires landscaping along both street frontages, that is on Tyler Road and on Morton Taylor Road. The applicant will be planting 12 deciduous trees, five ornamental trees and 100 shrubs along Tyler Road they will also be planting 12 deciduous trees, five ornamental trees, and 93 shrubs along the modern Taylor frontage. In addition to that, the entire parking lot will be landscaped and screened from the public rights of way by a 25 foot wide landscape green belt, which will be planted with shrubs in order to create an opaque screen and screen the building. Loading area is located on the east side of the building. The ordinance requires either an opaque wall or a green belt. The applicant is proposing to plant a double row of evergreen trees and shrubs. Uh, Director Powers, if possible, if you could see the landscape plan on the screen, that would be helpful. They are proposing to plant double staggered row of evergreen trees in this area to ensure that there is a screen. With regard to green belt buffering, one tree for every 20, the ordinance requires a 20 foot wide buffer with one tree for every 20 feet between the building and the R1C zoned parcels to the east and south. 
we asked the applicant when they plant the trees to make sure that the residents to the east and south are well protected because these are the only two single family homes that immediately share a common property line with the subject site. The applicant has, is proposing a total of 31 trees along the south property line and there is also existing vegetation trees and shrubs along the property line which will be left intact. So all the trees and shrubs that you see right now protecting the home to the south will be left intact and in addition to that 31 additional trees will be planted. So from the homeowner to the south literally this building will not be visible because there will be a dense screen between them and this. With regard to uh, C district landscaping. In addition to green belt landscaping, senior housing landscaping and others, um, you can see in the landscape plan, the unusual dark green that is on the west side of the detention pond, north of the home on Morton Taylor. Those are all new evergreen trees that are being planted in order to fill up any gaps in the existing shrub vegetation and create a solid screen. In addition to all these requirements, the ordinance also has a requirement where any property that is located in the C district needs to provide additional landscape screening for every 25 square feet. So every 25 square feet of floor area. So based upon the building size, additional landscaping um, of about 2,501 square feet is required. Now the six courtyards that are shown as part of this proposal actually equates to 22,770 square feet of open space. The detention pond landscaping is subject to review and approval by Wayne County. So once the county approves the detention pond design and the plantings, the applicant will submit it to us for the record. With regard to tree removal, as I noted during the special land use review, the applicant is removing all the trees that are located in the area of the building, building footprint and the parking lots. And these replacement trees, the applicant uh, per the tree survey a total of 207 trees are being removed. Of these, only 97 trees are regulated trees. Regulated trees are any trees that are five inches caliper or greater, or a species that needs to be saved. The applicant is planting replacement for all of these trees, and these replacement trees will be in addition to all the landscaping categories that I just discussed. With regard to lighting, the property will have pole and wall-mounted light fixtures, the pole lights are only 16 foot tall black metal light poles and the illumination will be just what is the minimum required in order to make it safe passage around the building. We made sure that manufacturers touch sheet details of the fixture style and design were proposed and all of these fixtures are downward directed and shielded to ensure that glare from any of the actual light source or the fixtures is not visible from any of the residential properties in and around this area. As to architecture, the structure is to be constructed of a foundation of face brick with limestone sills. The walls have alternating cultured stone veneer, composite siding, and face brick to provide a variation to the facade and break up the expanse of wall. We had previously reviewed and asked the applicant to add more gables, dormers into the roofs, which have been added to improve the appearance of the building. The main entry to the building on the north side of Tyler Road is enhanced by a covered porch with pillars and a raised roof feature. All of the facades include doors and window openings, so it is it is a residential looking building. It's a bigger building, but it is a residential looking building for the number of windows and doors that have been included. We had asked the applicant to bring building material samples to tonight's meeting. I guess the only way is for them to hold up the material before you on the screen, or if that is not possible, they can bring the materials in and drop it off in person with the building department for director powers to make sure that it meets the standards. The ordinance does show a dumpster enclosure on the southeast corner of the site, about 25 feet from the east property line. The enclosure is designed with stone veneer to match the principal structure and additional evergreen screening trees have been provided so the dumpster is not visible from the residence to the east. The plan proposes a monument sign along each of the street frontages. The sign is located outside the clear vision triangle. It's a monument base that will be constructed of brick veneer to match the building. The actual sign face is only 14 square feet and it will have brushed aluminum lettering with cultured stone veneer support pillars. So it will. it is a very smaller sign. It is just intended to identify the facility, not 
particularly advertise it. Finally, in response to a significant question that was raised at the public hearing regarding the proposed generator locations to service the site, the revised plan does show a generator and transformer cabinet in the northeast corner of the building and a generator and control panel on the north side of the detention pond. The main generator panel area is well screened. The generator that is shown near the landscape plan, uh, we need to see the screening around it. And we also need a clarification from the applicant if a second generator, I don't know if it's intended as a backup generator, is required or not. If a second generator is required, it would be our recommendation that we moved away from the detention pond area and move closer to the building somewhere as far away from the south and the east property lines as possible. The questions were also raised about the site litter and cleaning up so that there are no cigarette butts or trash thrown around by employees. And the applicant has maintained and noted that the site will be kept litter free. This is a code enforcement issue and code enforcement will be on top of it to ensure that the site is kept clean. The applicant has been working with us and has stated to the township that they would like to be a good neighbor and they would like to address all of the concerns of all the homeowners who are around them. To that end, they have been extremely receptive to any comments for changes made on this plan. So based on the revised plans that are submitted, it would be a recommendation that preliminary site plan approval be granted for the proposed Hampton Manor Senior Housing Project, subject to review and approval of the stormwater detention plan by the Township Engineer in Wayne County, approval of the detention pond landscaping by Wayne County. Uh, there are a couple of... Um, incorrect notes with regard to off-site trees. Those notes just need to be corrected. Clarification on the need for a second generator panel. And if deemed necessary, the generator panel needs to be moved off from near the detention pond. And finally, the recommendation that was just made for special land use approval by the Township Board of Trustees. I would be happy to answer any questions now or after the Township Engineer's review. Thanks so much, Ms. Krishnan. Let's go right to the engineering review. Mr. Kamer, how does Fishbeck review this project? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as Ms. Krishnan uh, had mentioned before, um, we had reviewed this, uh, this site plan back in January uh, or February, um, actually maybe even earlier, the end of the year, and at that point, we had recommended a preliminary site plan approval for engineering feasibility. Um, and this is just a reminder to anybody that's listening. At this time, Fishbeck examines and reviews the feasibility of the engineering aspects of the site, um, but does not conduct a full engineering review until engineering plan submittal um, once they get through preliminary site plan review. Um, as I said, the previous site plan was uh, recommended for site plan approval for engineering feasibility, um, and that was in our letter dated December 23rd, um, 2019. Um, you'll see in this letter, because the engineers and the site plan was in such good shape when they um, resubmitted, what we like to do is we leave some of our comments from the previous letters in the letter, and then also indicate how the applicant has responded to our comments. So as you read through the letter, um, you'll see their responses um, from their preliminary uh, plans and developer response letter dated July 6th and um, gives an indication of what their action uh, plan is for some of the uh, items that we previously had indicated needed uh, fixing or um, response to. Um, so with that, I'll go through a couple of the uh, bigger items that we found on the site um, that, you know, just for the engineer and the uh, architect to, to think about uh, as they get into the engineering uh, side of things. Um, one of the, the first comments, uh, general comments was the existing uh, sanitary sewer system or septic tank for the building or any proposed demolition needed to be shown on the plans. The applicant indicated that there is no evidence of a septic system uh, located on site. The Wayne County Environmental Health Department has been contacted and there are no records on file. Uh, the current property owner says that there's no septic system and that the township has, uh, was contacted in November of 2019 and that there was no lead information for the site um, uh, 
uh, as it is uh, happening now. And so the recommendation was to have this, the sanitary service line traced um, and indicate that as part of their demolition plan. Our big concern there is just making sure that there's no existing septic field or system that's on site. Um, one of the other items that we always bring up at this time is that soil boring information must be included uh, as part of their engineering plans as they move forward. This is uh, specifically important on this site because depending on where the groundwater table is uh, on the site, it may impact the size um, of the needed size for their detention pond on site. Uh, next, we'll get into the water main service. Um, I'll give a brief overview of what's out there currently and then what the proposed um, plan is for the site. Currently, the Township GIS uh, indicate a publicly owned 12 inch cast iron water main that runs north and south along the west side of Morton Taylor. And there is a 12 inch asbestos cement water main that runs east and west on the north side of Tyler Road. So each side of uh, the property has a 12 inch water main. Um, the applicant's plan indicates an eight inch public water main loop that is uh, looped around the building with three six inch fire hydrant leads. There is a six inch fire service lead and a two inch domestic water service lead. Um, the plans indicate that a 12 inch water main, uh, a water main easement to the township um, will be granted. And there are two connections to the 12 inch cast iron water main along Morton Taylor. So they will be looping from the west side of the building around the building and will tie in in two different places on the water main on the west side of Morton Taylor. Uh, one of our comments there is because the water main is on the west side of the road that the applicants must uh, review and get approval from Wayne County uh, for their methodology of installing the water main underneath Morton Taylor Road. Um, and that could have potential impacts on Morton Taylor Road while they install that. Um, and the applicant had uh, responded that they will talk with Wayne County DPS and uh, will give them the full set of engineering plans as soon as they get to that level. Um, other than that, we didn't see any major issues with uh, their basic plan for water main and they show um, good water main uh, feasibility mm -hmm. on site. Uh, the sanitary sewer um, township GIS records indicate that there is a publicly owned 15 inch sanitary sewer uh, running east and west on the north side of Tyler Road and a publicly owned 18 inch sanitary sewer running north and south on the east side of Morton Taylor Road. The applicant is proposing to install an eight inch sanitary, sanitary sewer lead from the proposed structure um, with a grease trap from the north side of the building and uh, tie into the 15 inch sanitary sewer running east and west along Tyler Road. Um, there are no uh, major uh, issues with the way that they show this connection, but we always make sure that they um, know that they will have to get um, approval from the wastewater treatment system owner, which in this part of town is Shiva. And also there could be some DEQ um, requests uh, that come through um, if they plan to install any portion of this as public sanitary sewer. Um, otherwise, uh, I think they're on the right track for engineering feasibility with the sanitary sewer system. Uh, I know one of the, one of the concerns uh, in the last meeting that we had was the stormwater and how they were going to deal with this on site. And I think as we indicated before, they had a a good conceptual design and just needed to speak with Wayne County to get their um, approval and their comments prior to submitting for engineering feasibility or for engineering approval. Um, they had indicated that they had sent to Wayne County and the most recent set of plans which we reviewed did have some revisions based on Wayne County comments. Um, and just to go over the existing system right now, um, there are open roadside ditches that run along the west and northern side of the property. Um, the ultimate discharge area for this property is in the northwest quadrant of Morton Taylor and Tyler Road, um, which then eventually goes 
north along Morton Taylor and ties into the McLaughlin drain. Um, they are proposing on site uh, to capture stormwater runoff uh, via roof drain leads, storm drain, storm drain inlets, and a system of storm sewers that eventually discharge into an on-site detention basin. The detention basin is proposed to outflow through a restrictor and into a proposed pump station. This pump station then discharges into a proposed manhole on the top of the existing 15 inch storm sewer pipe on the west side of Morton Taylor Road. So that will be three utility lines crossing from their property to the west side of Morton Taylor. Um, they also do some drainage uh, or ditch uh, reconfiguration along the property um, in order to um, just make sure their, their driveways um, work and they extend extending some of their driveway culverts. Um, so as I indicated, the applicant provided information um, that they submitted to Wayne County. They updated their plans per the comments from Wayne County, but one of the things that we like to see the applicants do is also submit the comments from Wayne County so that we can verify that they are um, following what Wayne County has recommended. And if there's anything that we possibly don't agree with as the township that we uh, make sure that uh, we have discussions with Wayne County themselves. Um, other than that, there's some minor comments about uh, making sure that their driveways um, are concrete uh, because it is a commercial driveway um, coming off of uh, Morton Taylor and Tyler Roads and that the applicant submits for soil erosion and sedimentation um, control permits uh, moving forward. So as I indicated before, there were some minor changes to some of the comments that we had, but at this time we see no issue with uh, recommending the project moving forward based on preliminary site plan approval for engineering feasibility, uh, subjects to the comments that we've listed above. And with that, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them if I, uh, if I can do so. Great, thanks, Mr. Tamer, appreciate it. So commissioners, questions or comments for staff or for the applicant? Anyone? Questions or comments from the audience? Mr. Williams is still with us. Is his question answered and as far as we are in preliminary for engineering? Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. Um, um, I apologize for missing my turn. I, I, I do have a, um, a quick question for um, Ms. Krishnan um, on the in your letter um, on the portion of the uh, detention pond landscaping, um, just one quick question. Um, is it necessary to have a fence around the uh, detention pond with there, is there, is there a house? Is there someone living there um, off of, I guess it's Morton Taylor Road next to the pond there? Is there someone living there? Yes, to my knowledge there is a uh young family that lives there with, uh, there are little children in there. Uh, with regard to fencing around the detention pond, I believe that is also a determination that Wayne County makes. The fencing around the pond is determined based upon the amount of standing water or if, or the requirement is that there should be no standing water or the slope. I would defer to uh, Paul Kamer, the township engineer to maybe speak on that because I know the County makes a call on the actual detention pond fencing to all aspects pertaining to its design. Paul, do you have anything to add? Yeah, to my to my knowledge, uh, it, it is based on, as you mentioned, uh, that it's based on the slope. So as, as long as the side slopes leading up to any standing water are um, traversable, and I think it's a one on six is what they have to uh, have to adhere to, um, that there is no fence requirement from Wayne County, uh, but I would have to, I'd have to go back and verify that um, 
precisely, but that is my that is my recollection recollection of the uh, requirements is that the um, the side slopes of the pond need to be a certain flatness in order to um, mm -hmm. get rid of any fence. Mm -hmm. I think if the planning commission's concern is that the pond might be an attractive nuisance, maybe we could have Mr. Thompson address if they would be willing to put in a decorative uh, fence that has been required around industrial development ponds for the safety of the neighborhood and also to ensure that nobody gets into the pond itself. Mr. Thompson, would you be able to answer that? Yes, if a fence is required, we're glad they put one in. Uh, I, I actually prefer fences around ponds. Okay, let, let me double check that, Mr. Boynton. So if any motion is made, please do include the fence and we will double check it before it comes back for final plan approval, if we go that route. Okay, thank you very much. And I do see, I do see that Mr. Williams' uh, hand is raised. So I will invite him to uh, speak again. Great. Am I on? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, you had mentioned that it does, the storm water is going to eventually make it to McClary Drain. Is that yes, what it I will? Say? Yes, it will. Okay, so does the Planning Commission know that McClary Drain is plugged downriver? Well, just to give some uh, perspective, I can share downriver how far? Um, I, I from my, from what I've heard, uh, it's plugged in Romulus. Would I live on Tyler Road west of Morton Taylor, um, between Belleville and, uh, Road and Morton Taylor Road, and my property cannot handle any more water. If this project is put in place, I fear that my property will be completely underwater and my it'll be up to my house. Currently, it's uh, seven feet from my house when it rains pretty good. And uh, the, my fear is with this approved, uh, I'll, I'll have water in my house. And I think if anyone's ever drove down Tyler Road, they could see my house. It's on the south side of Tyler Road, um, you know, and it's that lot's full of water and you can see my yard takes maybe a good week to dry out. And like I said, this, this project, I'm, I just fear for what's going to happen. I guess that's if uh, McClary drains not cleared out. The stormwater for this site will be detained in a detention basin and it will be re released at a rate that is no greater than it than occurs at this time. It releases into the ditch on the west side of Morton Taylor Road and runs north for about half a mile before it hits the drain, which would be considerably south of your house. So the uh, impact on your property should be negligible. But if it's going to McClary Drain, it's going to McClary Drain. So yes. any water going to McClary Drain is going to be more water. It will be reduced. It will, it will be released at a rate that's no greater and probably less than the rate that is going in there now. Hmm. I'll but believe what, it when I see it. Okay. Whatever we do is going to meet with the requirements of the Wayne County uh, Public Works and the Wayne County Road Commission. Well, Wayne County Public Works doesn't want to clear McClary drain out. Yeah. So what do we do there? Do we hold that? Are they God now or something? I don't, uh, they can't do anything right anyway. So what, you know. <laughs> so I, I what, don't, I don't have a response to that. So, I mean, what, what do you want us residents to do? Give up? No. Sell our houses and move out and get, get a lower price because our property's flooded out. So, I mean, that, that's just where I'm at on it. I don't want to, I, I just don't see this project helping me out at all if the drainage is not taken care of. Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. Um, 
Mr. Mr. Williams, you're saying that the drain itself is plugged in Romulus? Yep. Oh, the, uh -huh. the drain itself, the drain itself hasn't well, been cleared out in 30 well, something years. So well, I mean, okay, 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 okay. Um, well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a good workaround for this would be that as um, township staff are going to be doing the things that they're going to be needing to do um, to take care of uh, other things with this project, um, they can bring that up and then um, and maybe the township can send correspondence over to Romulus and have Romulus and Van Buren Township um, approach the county on the plugged issue and then have all of that come back and we'll see where that um, see where we go from there. Well, that would be a start, I guess. Okay. I think maybe that would be uh, the most prudent course to take. The another hand raised, and I think that uh, raised hand is now a panelist on this discussion. So we have uh, our public services director, Matthew Best, who uh, may have comments on this issue if, if the chair uh, is, is comfortable having him speak. That'd be great. Director Best, welcome to the meeting. I've been here watching. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, just a just a couple, couple of quick uh, answers to help the planning commission out on this uh, stormwater question. Um, the Mr. Williams is correct. His property uh, does take on a lot of water, and and, and there's a uh, a study that the township engineers Fishbeck did on the parcel for him and his neighbor to determine the. Um, uh, uh, the reason for the issue and, and that that copy of that report can be made available to you um, so you can see it if there's uh, if there's a request for it. Um, <clears throat> that that is a county that the drain that uh, goes along the uh, the, uh, the road there on the east west side of Tyler uh, west side of Morton Taylor on along Tyler Road is the McClary the um, it stays along the road. The, the area that floods uh, Mr. Williams is a, is a ditch that uh, is a private ditch that takes on Myers stormwater from the Myers detention pond. So when water comes out of the Myers detention pond through this privately owned ditch, it gets to the road and that's where it's supposed to get out. What happens is water, because there's the county drain, the McClary drain has been uh, not maintained by the by the county through the petition process where they clean it out because they're limited under the drain code and many other reasons. But what happens is because it's in district, it needs repair, uh, water backs up in Romulus and then works its way back to um, areas into Van Buren Township. If you remember, or if you've driven through uh, the other a uh, 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 e-course road and Haggerty during a, a large storm, you'll see sometimes that intersection gets water. That's the McClowry drain backing up. Um, we have been working closely trying to get the county to do this. In fact, uh, about five and a half to six years ago, there was a petition that uh, from residents in Romulus to clean out the McClowry drain and uh, residents from the drainage district spoke for and against the clean out and the drainage district uh, the drain the board of determination found uh, that the drain clean out was not necessary at that time about six years ago um, the process to clean out the drain is one where residents have to sign a petition and if they get 10 taxpayers to sign the petition then a petition process moves forward and that's what needs to be done here uh, to facilitate that. It can't really be done by uh, the community, the petition process. So um, it has to be done by residents. So um, we'll be happy to share the in, in, to any resident who wants to move forward on a petition to solve that problem. But um, that's the general um, 
Um, that's the general uh, story there. And for this, the stormwater actually goes to um, the road ditch, which meets up with the McClary drain further north on Morton Taylor. And then that drives in through Pat down Ecourse Road to Romulus. Um, to speak a little bit more clearly about uh, um, the stormwater leaving the site, designed properly and following the, town, the, the uh, Wayne County standards, uh, the standards are supposed to put the discharge out of that site equal to or less than what it was before it was developed. So uh, in essentially a green field. So the water should actually uh, leaving the, the flow of water leaving the site should be the same or less in theory as it leaves the site under a properly maintained detention system. Um, while Wayne County is in charge of it, that's why we have uh, Paul Kamer and Fishbeck to make sure that the design is correct and it gets built correctly. So hopefully that answers the, the questions about the flooding. Remember if there's a report if you'd like to see it regarding the flooding issue. And if there are residents that need uh, direction on how to do a petition to help clean out the drain, our office is happy to assist. Thank you. Thank you, Director Best. Can you just, um, something that you said, uh, put an idea in my head. Can you just clarify that I understand this correctly? So it's sure. pouring the rain and uh, Mr. Williams' yard is starting to retain water. And over at Hampton Manor, the detention pond is also retaining water, but the detention pond will not release that water so that it can floods Mr. Williams' property more. It will hold it until the water in Mr. Williams' property has gone down and then slowly release it. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? So the conditions that are happening on the site now when it rains should yes. be similar or less water leaving the site than from the detention pond uh, after this is built. So the water isn't held, uh, the, wa all, the water isn't held back. It's always gonna leave the site through the, um, the, o the outfall structure, which is, but it leaves that outfall structure not as a gushing torrent out of the pond. It leaves it through small pin hole, a uh, small pin size hole or small diameter holes in a standpipe, which restrict the flow to the, the agri free agricultural rate. So it lets the water out much slower than it would if it was just an open pipe. Thank you. I think I understand now. I appreciate the clarification. You're welcome. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Uh, Director Powers, did we have another comment from the audience? Yes, we do, Madam Chair, and I, I'm going to take the lead on this one as your moderator. Um, we have a gentleman that has his name in the chat as owner, and he does not have a microphone. So he put this comment before Director Best spoke. Um, he said, dig the ditch on Tyler Road all the way down the McClary drain. I am still flooding as bad as Mr. Williams. And that's all from him. Okay, so uh, I would encourage both of um most of our comments to um, try and talk to staff in the office and make sure that they have information that they need so that they could participate in a potential solution. Good suggestion. Director Powers. I think that's a really good idea. And these details about the de design will be fleshed out through the township engineer and Wayne County uh, public services review over the course of uh, what will be in more of an internal or interagency review before this comes back for final site plan approval with the planning commission. So we, we staff would be glad to answer questions or provide information about the study that has been done in the meantime. Great, thank you very much. Other questions or comments from the commission? Through the chair. Mr. Bud. Um, Mr. Williams and, and his neighbor have come to the board um, and we, we knew at that time or we found out late, later because we asked for uh, answers that Matt Best had had that study done. Uh, we asked for an update on that study. So if you all get a copy of it, you can read it and see what it is. And it would be, um, I mean, we all want the water gone. 
I go to Morton Taylor, I know the water is there. So hopefully that through the course of maybe correcting this, we can we can help Mr. Williams and his neighbor have a better solution to their drainage. But like they said, this project is quite a bit farther east from where they are. Thank you. Thank you, good to know. So maybe we'll um, see if we can't get a copy of the report available uh, to the commissioners as well so that we have the same information. That would be a good idea. Great. Um, I have a question for the applicant uh, going back to the site plan review and do you have building materials uh, tonight? I don't know how much sense it makes to hold them up to the <laughs> Um, but I do think that there are a lot of people who are curious about this project and they may want to stop by Township Hall at some point and see them. So if the materials could be dropped off so that staff would have them to share, that would be helpful. We will see the building materials are dropped off at the township so you have samples to show people. That'd be great. Thank you. If I could, there's two questions that came up. Uh, Ms. Krishna uh, talked about the backup generator by the pond. That backup generator is a smaller generator that is uh, that backs up the pump station at the pond in case the power goes out. It is not connected to the to the building at all. Okay. So that stays there. And also, as far as the, the water main crossing Morton Taylor Road, uh, the Wayne County is requiring that be bore and jack, so that the traffic lanes will not be closed at any time. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be working on the side of the road in the shoulder, but traffic will not be interrupted. Thank you. That's a good explanation. I appreciate that. I neglected earlier to note that we have a fire marshal review of the plans that have been submitted thus far. And upon his first and second review, um, his concerns have been addressed. So uh, we'll have you keep in touch with the fire marshal as final site plan comes through. We will. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments from the commission or the audience, or are we ready to take action on this agenda item? Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. I move that um, the applicant Van Buren Investors Land Holdings LLC requesting pre preliminary site plan approval for the construction of a proposed senior housing facility called Hampton Manor with assisted living and memory care units um, located on Tyler Road between Morton Taylor and Haggerty Road um, zoned in the uh, C District um, a parcel which is 7.11 acres uh, is granted approval pursuant to um, the following letters from McKenna dated March 24th, 2020, uh, from Fishbeck uh, dated July 16th of 2020, and a um, letter from Dave McAnally, Fire Marshal uh, of Van Buren Township uh, Fire Department. Um, dated July 15th of 2020. And, you add your and with attention to the fencing question uh, from point G on page 24 of the McKenna letter, also uh, same letter dated March 24th of 2020. Okay, motion, is there support? Madam Chair, I support. Thanks, Commissioner Jar. This will be a roll call vote for preliminary site plan approval. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Ashenson? Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Cheryl Thompson. Yes. So gentlemen, you have preliminary site plan approval and you have some engineering work to do and the township will uh, help with the residents to try and get information that they need, especially on the engineering. 
and we'll look forward to seeing you back at some point with final. Thank ladies you. And gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission, I appreciate your time this evening uh, and we hope to be back to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thanks, for, thanks for good review and uh, good discussion, especially keeping us on track with um, the lapse in time from the last time we heard <laughs> this time in the project. Thanks to everyone for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. We will move now to new business item one. This is the special land use permit request for the mobile gas station redevelopment and drive through. The request by NC designers on behalf of the owner is real estate LLC, Belleville Oil Company, Inc. for a special land use permit to demolish buildings on an existing gasoline station site and to construct a new convenience store with retail and food service, including drive through lane and one drive through window, gasoline pumps and related site plan approvals. Again, approximately 1.06 acre site. It is zoned C1 General Business District and is located at 11250 Haggerty Road. Same uh, tax parcel number as the public hearing previously in this meeting. It is the northwest corner of the intersection of I-94 North Service Drive and Haggerty Road. Um, if we have anything that the applicant would like to inform us on, um, we've had the pre short presentation and review on the um, public hearing. Applicant, Director Powers, to you. And at this time, I see that uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. N Nasser Choker, is present. So um, what I might do is share my screen. I'm not sure if he has the ability to pull up his plan, but he might just speak uh, to his project briefly. And just to give another uh, broad overview, this is a consideration of the special land use request. Uh, I will go into a little bit more background after um, Nasser has a chance to describe the proposal uh, at a broad view. Of course, we will not go through both of the items we went through on the last project, including the preliminary site plan at this time. So this will not be a detailed review of the site plan, but I will show the site plan just to give some perspective of what's being proposed. And uh, Nasser, can, uh, if you'd like to just introduce your project at this time, we'd be glad to hear you do that. Okay. I'll go ahead. Sure, go ahead. You have the floor. Okay. Um, well, we have an existing uh, gas station and uh, what we're doing, uh, uh, we're uh, proposing a new uh, uh, building, uh, approximate uh, size about 3,400 square feet. And uh, we're adding a uh, drive-through. Uh, we did work with the city and the planning uh, department uh, regarding the uh, site layout, uh, maneuvering, uh, truck maneuvering inside the site. And uh, we are so far uh, meeting whatever the uh, planning is recommending to us to do uh, in terms of uh, the landscaping, the approaches, and uh, some other uh, minor uh, little things that we did adjust on the site. And uh, we're recommending if uh, we can have an approval on, for the uh, site plan um, use approval. Mm. Uh, there isn't much to say at the time being <clears throat> because it's not the, uh, I, I believe, uh, uh, site plan uh, discussion. So I'll leave that to Don. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Director Powers, information to share? Thank you. And I appreciate the introduction by the applicant because it is a little bit unusual to break this apart uh, with respect to having a, a action or consideration of a special land use before the preliminary site plan. Um, but I'll give you a little bit of background on this site and kind of how we got to this point. Um, I will share uh, you might be familiar with the existing site here at uh, the northwest corner of Haggerty Road 
and the North 94 service drive. Um, as the applicant mentioned, this is a redevelopment um, involving the removal of the existing structures on this site. There, there will be a, uh, contra a slight contraction of the canopies for the gas station. Uh, I believe it's being reduced from 12 pumps to 10. Uh, and then there will be an expansion of the convenience store that you see on the site now. Um, just, just over 900 square feet currently going up to roughly 3,400 square feet with an expanded uh, service area and a, a drive-through component. The drive-through component is what requires a special land use permit in the C1 zoning district. And so there needs to be action and a public hearing on the special land use request. You just held the public hearing earlier tonight. Um, and the special land use request, again, uh, requ requires certain standards to be met that demonstrate that this use generally and specifically adhere to the surrounding fabric of the other uh, land in the vicinity. And uh, Vidya Krishna will uh, go through her findings on the land use request shortly here. Um, but I will just show sort of um, at a broad view um, why we're comfortable with a special recommendation to the Township Board of Trustees at this time. Um, this is a, a positive redevelopment of an existing gas station site. I'll show just some, some basic imagery to demonstrate um, what's being proposed and the direction it's heading in from a design standpoint. Um, let me pull this up. Here is a picture of the proposed facade treatment of the new building. And you just saw sort of from a, a distant street view what's there now. So there are improved uh, design features on the building. Um, um, uh, good circulation plan in place for the design of the site itself. And um, we think this is the um, site plan and, and use that would adhere to the surrounding um, the, the character of the surrounding areas and, and would serve a, a regional purpose being near a highway interchange and, and having um, the kind of commercial use that would, would fit this area. So generally we are comfortable with special land use approval for the project as uh, the principal planner will go through shortly. Uh, specifically when we get to the details, there are a number of items with respect to utilities, um, site uh, design standards, uh, some items with respect to the uh, turning templates uh, that we will want to make sure are addressed well before we take the, the fully detailed site plan before you. Um, we had notice for the public hearing for the special land use for tonight. We gained comfort with the special land use request and so we are act asking you to act on the special land use request but not on the preliminary site plan request. So with that, I will defer the rest of the comments on the special land use request over to uh, Vidya Krishnan. Thank you, Director Powers. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think Director Powers provided a pretty good summary, but I will go over the details since it's a special land use request. As was mentioned, the applicant is proposing to construct a new grass station with a drive to restaurant on a site that already has a previously operating convenience store and gas station, which are to be demolished. Uh, the site is zoned C1, which is general business, and has a total site area of 0.9 acres. Uh, as was mentioned, there are general standards to consider a special land use review and then specific standards. I'll go over the general standards in brief first. First being, will it promote the use of land in a socially and economically desirable manner? There was an existing gas station and convenience store on the site and the applicant is proposing all the changes in terms of constructing a new building with a drive-through in order to improve the viability of the business. So we believe it is going to continue to promote the use of the land in a socially and economically desirable manner. Any impacts that result from the actual use of the site are addressed in our site plan review letter. As was mentioned by Director Powers, we had uh, a lot of comments on the site plan. The overall layout is workable. However, many, many changes need to be made to the site plan itself. So we did not deem it prudent to bring the site plan before you for consideration of preliminary. It is not in a shape to be granted approval with 1920 conditions on it. So only the drive-through use by itself is before you for consideration tonight. The second criteria is, is necessary for public convenience at the location. Uh, the standard is met. Is compatible with the adjacent uses of land. The 
Sites to the north, south, and west are currently vacant. And across the street to the east is a BP gas station. So the use of the property is consistent with the existing pattern of development. The next criteria is that the site is designed located to be operated so that public health, safety, and welfare will be protected. The changes do involve, as uh, Mr. Coucher mentioned, they had to change some orientation of the building itself and the size and shape of the canopy in order to come up with a circulation plan that was deemed acceptable uh, for planning, engineering, and for the fire marshal too. Uh, some changes have been made. Additional changes have also been recommended, which the applicant will have to address. The site can be uh, served by public facilities and utilities. We don't believe it is going to put a strain on the system. Uh, the proposed site improvements will not cause injury to the property in the neighborhood in which it is located. With regard to natural environment and conservation of natural resources and energy, four trees are proposed to be removed, but many more are proposed to be planted. Now the landscaping comments in detail are once again addressed in our site plan review letter. The mobile gas station use is within the provisions of uses requiring special approval and is in harmony with the purpose and the intent of the C1 zoning district. It also is a valid exercise of the township's police power. Now, in addition to these general standards we, which have been met for a special land use, there are specific criteria for drive-throughs itself. The first one is sort of the entrance or the exit to any such use shall be located at least 100 feet from the intersection of any two streets. We had previously asked the applicant to note the distance of the access drives to the site off of the intersection of Haggerty Road and I-94 service drive. The dimension is not there, but based on our scaling of the plan, the access drive of the service drive complies, but the one that is shown on the east side, on the right side of your screen of Haggerty Road appears to be only 90 feet away. This is an existing non-conformity. However, since the applicant is literally redoing the entire site and this particular access drive is 40 feet wide, we believe there is ample opportunity to bring the site into conformance, either by reducing the width of the drive to 30 feet, which is still sufficient for accommodating truck turning movements. If a wider drive is desired, the applicant will have to shift this to the north in order to meet the 100 feet distance requirement. And this is a specific requirement for drive-throughs and is not something that can be modified. All such uses shall have direct ingress and egress through a paved major thoroughfare. Now, the access is to the drive-through is off Haggerty Road, and that is designated as a major thoroughfare. All lighting and illuminated display shall not reflect onto any adjacent residential zoning district and must meet the ordinance requirements of Section 8.105. There are no abutting residential districts. So any illumination on the site is not going to affect any homes. However, the photometric plan that is submitted is not very clearly legible. The site is shown as a small pod in the middle of a huge sheet. Uh, we need a close-up of the site, actual illumination intensities, specifically under the gas station canopy itself. All the illumination intensities need to match up to what is allowable by the ordinance tapering off to uh, zero lumens at the property line. And finally, the approving authority shall consider proximity of the use to existing places of congregation of children, that is schools regarding traffic and circulation. There are no schools or other places of congregation for children within thousand feet of the site. So the standard is met. Now the proposed drive through meets the general standards for consideration of special land use approval, but the specific standard with regard to the driveway location remains to be addressed. This can be addressed on a site plan. If it was a condition that could not be addressed, we would not bring the plan before you tonight. We believe it is perfectly feasible in order to meet the 100 foot distance requirement. So at this time, it would be our recommendation that the planning commission recommend approval for the proposed special land use for the drive through to the Township Board of Trustees, subject to the following conditions. First would be shifting of the access drive off Haggerty Road 10 feet to the north or reducing the width of the access drive by 10 feet in order to comply with the 100 feet distance requirement from the intersection. Second condition would be compliance of proposed illumination levels to the ordinance. And finally, that when a preliminary site plan approval is granted, all of those conditions will be met and the applicant will come back for preliminary and final site plan approval. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Christian. Questions or comments from the commission? 
for the applicant. Madam Plan. Chair. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Jar, I do see you. <laughs> Thank you. Is the existing billboard sign on the site plan to, are we planning on keeping that during this redevelopment or will that sign be removed? That is no, I'm sorry, Mr. Kocher, go ahead. Okay, um, that sign, I would try to keep that billboard sign and the owner, I mean, he has a uh, contract with uh, a company uh, probably on that sign and he would like to leave it on. Uh, I know it's, I mean, we talked about this previously and uh, um, I know I'm going to have a heads up on that billboard sign, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, we are meeting and we're giving whatever uh, we can on this site and to please the uh, board and the city and the uh, community around us. And we're going to be doing a really nice modern uh, building and nice uh, landscaping and uh, serve the purpose for the public. I think that billboard uh, sign, it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna hurt uh, someone. Thank you. Other questions or comments, Commissioner Jar? No, thank you for the answer, I appreciate it. Madam Chair. Ms. Krishnan. I would just like to provide some input on that. We have still asked the applicant for additional information regarding the pole sign, its size, area, and to determine whether it's a conforming or a non-conforming sign. It has been the township's policy that if a site is entirely being redone, any existing non-conforming signs need to be taken down and brought into conformity with the ordinance. That is something that will be discussed with the applicant, and you'll probably see it addressed when the applicant is before you for preliminary site plan approval. Great. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments? Commissioners? Anyone in the audience? Pretty straightforward. This would be a recommendation to Township Board. Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. I move that we grant special land use permit um, requested I by I recommend that to the township board. I'm sorry. Recommend that to the township board. Uh, yes, to the, yes to the township board. Um, by NC Designers, on behalf of owner which is Real Estate LLC slash Belleville Oil Company Incorporated, um, special land use permit to demolish buildings on an existing gasoline station site and to construct a new convenience store with retail and food service, including a drive-through lane and one drive-through window, gasoline pumps and related site improvements. Um, location is in the C1 zoned district, general business district located at 11250 Haggerty Road um, at the northwest corner of the intersection of the I-94 service drive, north service drive and Haggerty Road um, pursuant to uh, letters from McKenna dated July 15th of 2020 and also from Director Power letter dated July 16th of 2020. Thank you, we have motion, is there support? Uh, support, Commissioner Jar. Commissioner Jar. Any discussion on the motion? This will be a roll call vote, please. Medina Hatchinson. Yes. Sherry Budd? Yes. Brian Kelly? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. 
thank you. That motion will go to the township board at one of their upcoming meetings. Thanks to the applicant and to staff. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you back with a preliminary site plan request. Oh. We will move now to under new business item number two. This is a temporary land use approval for Waters Kitchen. Carolyn Gregory of Waters Kitchen is requesting temporary land use permit for the outdoor service of catfish, ribs, wings, and other food using a food trailer. The property is located at 110 Belleville Road, parcel number 8306199005. Seven two six on the west side of Belleville Road between Tyler Road and the North I-94 service drive. And Director Powers, do yes. you want to introduce our applicants? Thank you. I see that uh, applicant Colin Gregory is on the line here and I appreciate her patience. Her, her item had to wait till the end. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot of good discussion so far. So I'll jump right in uh, and introduce Carolyn, uh, perhaps if she would like to make any comments about the request uh, before I go into my report, which will be sort of line by line based on our temporary land use standards. Um, so perhaps uh, Ms. Gregory, would you just like to say a couple things about your, uh, your proposed business here in front of the Menard store? Yes, my name is Carolyn Gregory. Uh, I am the sole owner of Waters Kitchen. I've been in this profession over 20 years. Um, I also grew up in Sumter Township in my younger years and went to Belleville High School, so it's not like I'm new to the district. Um, but I did not know, I'm, I'm very new with this um, temporary lands permit, but you know, you I, that's what I got you professional guys here to help me along and help me get approved so I can go make people happy. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great, Ms. Gregory. Thanks for the introduction. We'll hear the review and then there may be some questions or comments. So uh, stay with us and we'll see what where we come out. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Director Powers. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Ms. Gregory. Uh, I will go kind of um, line by line on the types of issues that we look at in a temporary land use permit, um, sort of as, as a broad overview, um, just to see what the trailer uh, looks like here. This is a, a picture taken by the applicant of the actual uh, trailer that would be used for food service. To orient you to the site where it's proposed, um, we were able to use a site plan from the original Menards project approval and identify the six parking spaces that would be occupied by this use near the center, uh, near the east uh, front end of the site, um, which uh, the Menards site actually has frontage on uh, Belleville Road that uh, defines the setback from the front yard. So uh, significantly setback from the front yard there off of Belleville Road, but in a, a visible location in relation to the shopping traffic at Menards. A uh, slightly different location from the recent temporary land use that was proposed here, which was the firework stand near the south end of the site, uh, because that was sort of its own um, function more as its own uh, space and its own use, whereas this is uh, very much gathering pass through traffic uh, from those visiting Menards. So uh, the first thing that we look at with respect to temporary land uses is the uh, impacts on uh, parking. This is an eight foot by 20 foot uh, trailer that um, occupies six parking spaces in a parking lot that more than adequately serves the parking for the Menard store. Um, we also look at the drainage impacts. This, this is a minimal drainage impact use with respect to the fact that it has no uh, addition of impervious surface compared to the paving on the parking lot. The use, let me just navigate to uh, the report so we can follow along. Um, we also discussed that the use is um, going to uh, complement the retail sales of the Menard store. Um, there is a compatibility with the surrounding land uses. Uh, this provides uh, food service in proximity to uh, a major retail provider 
Whereas you often see food service indoors at, at a uh, large store like a Meyer or Menards or Costco. Um, in this case, it's, it's being brought outside. Um, so that it's compatible in that regard. The size, height, and type of construction for the proposed buildings and structures, um, it's, it's sort of somewhere between a vehicle and a building, but um, you can see the images there. Um, basically, a, a, a nondescript um, sort of dressing on the trailer, uh, certainly not um, too outlandish in relation to its surroundings. It advertises the food. Um, uh, my understanding is it would be oriented toward the Menards site. Um, perhaps the applicant can clarify which way uh, she would park. There is some information on the trailer about the food being served there, but that um, I interpret as being different from what we would regulate as temporary signage. So I do ask if there's additional signage outside of the trailer that there would be a requirement for a temporary sign permit through our office in the building department or the planning. No, no, it's not a sign outside. Good, so, and that, that was uh, my assumption from the application. Um, and sufficient setbacks from roads, rights of way and lot lines. As I mentioned, this is significantly set back from Belleville Road, uh, over 200 feet set back. Um, and it appears to be uh, about 25 feet from the side lot line uh, adjacent to the outlots to the east of the, the uh, Menard store. We will need to look at utilities or services with respect to adequate uh, electricity to the unit. If uh, there's a need for any electrical connections, we would need an electric. No. Mr. Dan, Mr. Powers, I am self-contained. So self-contained, so that um, alleviates any need for any electrical inspection or a connection. We will want to make sure there's adequate uh, trash disposal and site cleanup. Um, the building official and the fire department uh, review temporary uses like this, and uh, the fire department has actually already completed their review. Uh, we will also look at uh, sanitary facilities if there's any if there were any sanitary facilities, we would look at that as well. But my understanding is this, this use just relies on the restrooms in the Menard store. Um, Ms. Gregory, is that accurate? There's no additional? Accurate, accurate. yep. Okay. And I don't need any trash or anything. Anything that I have, I take with me and I dispose it myself at a later date somewhere. Good. Get my, yeah. I have everything, I, everything is already contained, everything to, by me is already contained. I don't need the news, Bernard's trash, nothing. I take everything, what I bring, I take with me. I also take my trailer back home with me at night because I am uh, OCD and I have to have it clean. <laughs> and that actually speaks to the, le the next thing I was gonna mention, which is your hours are um, 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., which are complementary to the Menard store hours. Uh, no additional lighting. Um, there are permits and licenses uh, that have been presented by the applicant in her packet. There's a license from uh, the state of Michigan um, Department of Agriculture, uh, which speaks to the food service aspect. If there is a requirement for a Wayne County Department of Health permit, we'll make sure we get that in hand. Um, I mentioned that the fire department did an inspection of the site that uh, that was a, of the uh, trailer that that was approved already. Um, the other thing I would, I would speak to here is just the impact on uh, potential noise, odor, dust, and glare, which uh, with the uh, food service, you most recently reviewed a, a similar use with the Real McCoy barbecue on West Yarn River Drive. In that case, there was more, uh, probably more residential proximity and there were some comments about um, sort of getting a, acceptance from the neighbors in that case. Uh, in this case, it's, it's a different context. This is adjacent to a, over three acre outlot that then leads to Belleville Road, which is a significant uh, arter arterial roadway, which on the other side of which there's uh, additional commercially zoned property. So um, it's my interpretation that uh, no odor, dust, and glare will not be an issue from this land use. And if there is an issue with respect to any of those items, there's a code enforcement process, but I do not anticipate any concerns on those regards. Uh, Mr. Then, Powers, as you talk about, um, you said a, a Wayne County health inspection, I will be, you know, uh, as a food uh, cart owner, you have to have two health inspections a year, and I will be getting one um, pretty soon, but I have to wait until the young lady can call me, and then I will bring you the paperwork and let you see what she told me. 
I mean, you let her see what she inspected. Very good. And though that is uh, that is my list of comments, and I appreciate the input from the applicant. I will just revert back to um, just the image that's in the packet uh, that you can sort of orient to. But otherwise, I open it up to the planning commission. My my only um, recommended conditions are that the uh, required uh, preliminary inspections are completed by the building official and the fire department. Um, and that there is uh, renewal. This is sort of a redundant condition, but this use would last a year after which the planning commission would um, be asked to renew if, if the applicant wishes to continue to renew uh, temporary land use permit on this site uh, at the same time next year. And that, that date would begin effectively uh, either today or on the day that the operation begins, um, whatever is actually the start of the operation. So July 22nd or uh, a year following the date of start 2021. Those are my comments. I'm glad to answer Great. any questions or powers. And thanks to Carolyn Gregory for clarifications. I'll ask for questions or comments from the commission first, please. Um, Chair. Commissioner Boynton. On the certificate of liability insurance, um, having seen a couple of these from other projects, um, would this one also uh, need to have um, the township also listed um, as far as um, being or waiving um, liability insurance or would we be attached on this one? I don't know, but that's that's my concern. Okay, are you asking me that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can try to address that. Um, it, it's my understanding that the liability insurance having the township uh, as part of that would be most applicable for an event-based uh, special event or a, a, a sort of a, a use in which you're uh, having township residents enclosed in the space. Um, I can certainly look at that and, and you can certainly request that as a condition that staff um, double checks whether township liability uh, insurance is required. And I actually see that uh, David McAnally, our fire marshal has his hand raised here. So he might have something to add to that as well. I think I'll invite him to speak. David, I'll, I'm trying to unmute you here. Maybe you can unmute yourself. How there about go. now? There we go. There we um, go. The uh, only thing that I would add, if you're doing this for a year, um, typical, the requirements for food, food trucks and so forth are that the uh, fire suppression systems actually get inspected twice a year and that they're cleaned regularly. I don't expect <laughs> That, that's sorry, that's my dog chief, sorry. I don't expect that they would have any kind of uh, issues before the end of this season, but when she opens up next year, that she can just call us and we'll come back out and reinspect it. Uh, it no additional cost when she starts back up next year. We'll just add that in the spring, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Ms. Gregory. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a question or a response? No, I, I told Mr. Dan, thank you. Okay. This Zoom meeting is not always easy to tell who's talking when. I know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Fire Marshal McAnally, that's helpful. And so, um, Director Powers, you'll just check into any uh, additional changes for liability insurance? Yes. Okay, so now listen, uh, now, when like when I did the strawberry festival, then that was uh I know we had to put Van Buren on there, but now since I'm with Menards and I'm I have a contract with Menards, uh, Menards name I have to stay on there. Correct. Because okay. I pay them, I pay them to be there. <laughs> right, right. That's correct. And yep. we see, when we see your agreement with them in our packet, I think the question was just whether or not. The township also needs to be named on the insurance policy. And that is a question. We don't have an answer to it, 
but Director Powers will look into it and let you know what he determines. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. So other questions or comments from the commission? Madam Chair, I know it's late. Mm -hmm. No, what's that? Um, I just have a question uh, to the applicant. Um, I see the trailer, it looks nice. The food, it sounds good. Can you tell me, is there going to be seating for your uh, no. customer? No, no, it's, no, no, it's six feet distance. I have all signs around my trailer. Everybody must come to my trailer with a mask and, you know, and they have to do what we need to do right now for this coronavirus because I do not want anyone sick. I do not want anyone coming to my trailer getting me sick. So no, it's all to go. You come to the window, you order. Either you could sit in your car or you could stand aside or however you want to do and then we'll get it ready for you and then you have to take it to go. No outside seating. Okay, thank you. You're so welcome. Anyone else? If there are no other questions or comments, then are you ready to take action on the temporary land use permit? I would need a motion. Madam Chair. I move that we grant temporary land use approval to Carolyn Gregory of Waters Kitchen for a temporary land use permit for the outdoor service of uh, catfish, ribs, wings, and other food use um, for a, with a food trailer. Um, the property will be located at, um, which is also known as Menards, located at 1010, I'm sorry, 10010 Belleville Road, on the east side of Belleville Road between Tyler Road and north of I-94. I also want to note for this motion, staff letter by Dan Powers dated July 16th, 2020. I will need some assistance with the liability um, that Mr. Boynton uh, brought up. Um, we're just going to have Mr. Powers check into um, if Van Buren Township should be listed as additional insured. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Support. Okay, we have motion and support, Commissioner Bud. Any discussion on the motion? Roll call vote, please. Brian Kelly? Yes. Medina Anchinson? Yes. Gary Bud? Yes. Donald Boynton? Yes. Jeff Jar? Yes. Joan Franzoy? Yes. Carol Thompson? Yes. So thank you very much, Ms. Gregory. We look forward to seeing you out on Belleville Road um, sooner, I think, or than later. It's made, it's made me hungry hearing how what, what you're up. <laughs> and uh, thanks also to Director Powers for the process through. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I you're appreciate welcome. it. Thanks, and I'm gonna get off here because I got to go to work. Okay. <laughs> thank you, bye-bye. All right, see Bye. you soon. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dan, yes. can you please shoot me an email in the morning and let me know when um, I can start? Will do. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we're winding down. We're to general discussion. Anything from staff or general discussion? You gotta, oh, leave. No. You gotta leave the meeting. We, we have a uh, plan in place to have a meeting on August 12th, um, but uh, at this time, no public hearings. Uh, it'll be a, a different type of agenda. So I just, on the heels of that, I want to say thank you for another uh, relatively long meeting and discussion tonight. I think we should be thanking you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Any other, anything else for general discussion from any of the commissioners? Anyone in the audience? Hearing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved. Support. Support and support, Commissioner Atkinson. All in favor say aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good discussion. Good Lots Thanks. to go through. Thanks, everyone.
Good night. Good night, everyone.